This is a video demonstrating how 2D eTakeoff integrates with Sage Estimating. How we integrate with Sage Estimating is through a bridge product that we have that is common to all of our interfaces and integrations to takeoff tools. Today we're going to show the eTakeoff 2D dimension integrated through bridge to uh, Sage Estimating. And this is actually a dynamic integration. As you can see through the arrows, it goes both ways. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start up eTakeoff, and I'm going to go ahead and load a project that we've already taken off with several estimators. But the first thing it's going to ask me is, who am I? So I'm going to go ahead and put in my ID, Garth Brooks, because this is a true multi-user package. We can have multiple estimators, as many as you want, doing a takeoff in the same set of drawings at the same time. And then we'll consolidate that and see all of the results, which is what I'm seeing here. So multiple people have contributed to this takeoff. And I'm going to go ahead and send it over to estimating, and I'll show you over there how we can actually sort it by who's contributed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go through our bridge product. So I'll start bridge. It's going to ask me, there is there's no link here between this takeoff and an estimate. Do you want to create one? I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to go ahead and simply say that this is the La Quinta Hotel. And I'm going to go ahead and call the estimate. I'm going to create an estimate from scratch without even opening up estimating, by the way. And I'm going to call it the La Quinta Hotel, just like we have that. I picked my database, which we can pick from a multitude of databases. And I can store it anywhere on any network drive or my local drive. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, hit OK. What it's going to do is it's going to load my database into Bridge from estimating. And we have this pre-mapped. Very simple to do. The first time you get this, you can map it just by dragging and dropping. And you only have to do it once. Or buy a database that we offer where it's all pre-mapped so I can do what I'm about to do. We've done takeoff on this over here. I'm going to go ahead and hit this high to sign. By hitting that, it's going to go ahead and allow me to see those things that go to estimating by having them disappear. I'm going to go to my automatic mode, and it's going to go out and find every takeoff that I've done on all these plans that we've done takeoff on, and it's going to bring them right here, and I want to send those to estimating. So I'm going to go ahead and click this send to estimating. I'm going to send 98 different takeoff items. You'll see on the background here that items are disappearing. So that's a visual audit saying that these are now being sent one by one over to the estimate, and that goes through my entire project. So you can see how fast that is. So in a matter of seconds, we've sent 98 items over to the estimate. Let's quickly look at the review mode before we go to the estimate. And you can see everything that's sent over. Let's explode this to see how that is done. So I'll actually load this slab up. You'll see that once I load this slab up, there's a dynamic link now with this object and our estimate. Here's what went to estimating right here. Here's what came from takeoff. And here's the calculations. Even WBS codes were actually assigned in takeoff are now assigned in my estimate. Even the name of the estimator, in this case, this slab was taken off by Judd Yule when he loaded this project and did a takeoff. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's go to the estimate to see what's happening. I'll go ahead and shut this down and it closes my takeoff and it now opens up my estimate for this La Quinta Hotel. You see I've done all these individually so they show them individually. We can easily combine them together for a consolidated look. Let's look at our assembly and you can see here on our assembly all the assemblies that we've done. You'll notice on the quantities that we actually have a little uh, blue check here to tell me that this did not come through a manual takeoff within our estimating system. This came through Bridge, and it could have come through any of our Bridge integrated products, which is the 2D eTakeoff product, Navisworks, or Assemble, and we have more coming. I can right-click on any one of these. Let's go down to this slab here, this moderate slab, and let's go ahead and let's review this. We keep an automatic audit trail of everything that comes through takeoff, and you notice this estimate's pretty much set up, and all I did was do this in eTakeoff. I can see the date and time that this happened. If I right-click, I can view my audit trail, and here's my audit trail of all that information that was sent over and it's a true audit trail because I can't touch it. So this particular slab was sent over. It already calculated the cost for this slab and the unit price per cubic yard for the slab and transferred all my WBS codes so I can use those for slicing and dicing my estimate. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I mentioned to you that we can sort it by estimator. So let me go by estimator here. I can see here that we had a couple items that someone actually didn't log in and it belongs to Judd Yule. So I can easily correct that here because they didn't log in when they did their takeoff. And all I'll do is I'll grab this and drag it down and put it in Judd's bank and now all of a sudden it's gone and it's been assigned to Judd. You'll notice here if I collapse this we had five different estimators contribute to this particular project. If I go to Judd Yule here I can see he did all these slabs individually. If I want to go to this particular slab for example and I want to say well where did this come from? How did this come up with? I can actually now go backwards into the takeoff tool by right clicking on any of these numbers because this is dynamically linked with the object we took off. I hit drill down. It 
it'll close my estimate. It'll actually open up the project and it will highlight the slab that we just came from estimating that was responsible for those numbers. And over here, you'll notice that this is the information that we put in. So let's put a what if scenario in here. Let's say, for example, that uh, I'm going to go ahead and skew this a little bit to make a change to show you how tightly integrated we are. So I've changed this slab. Maybe it's a revision. I've come over here and there's other things I can change here. Let's come down here and let's say that I'm going to change the uh, inches. So this is going to go four inches of gravel here, for example, and maybe uh, four inches of sand. And we're going to go ahead and make this 10 inches of concrete. And we're going to come down here and we're going to do this at 3,500 PSI. So not only do we do quantity takeoffs of areas and volume, we can get into other things that actually take advantage of our smart assemblies to calculate all the components of an assembly for this slab. So I've just changed the specs and some dimensions for this slab here. Let's go back over and how does that actually get addressed? Well, there's this little refresh button here and I click that and it goes through my entire estimate and checks all of my objects and compares them and says what's changed. It just went through my entire 98 takeoff items and said it came back with this item that changed. You'll notice it's got a pencil mark on it. If I hover over this, it says it's changed. These are the things that haven't changed. So I can click that to filter that and say just show me the things that have changed. Here are the changes, by the way, that it made. So here's the area square footage because I increased it. There are the other information that we did. And also you'll notice here that the perimeter changed because I've increased the size. All this was to keep keeping track of. And I have this little flashing box here that says, hey, do you want to apply these? Yes, I do. So now I'm going to apply these and I may want to also put a note. So I'll double click on this and just say uh, changed as per addenda. And I might want to put a note on this and say, uh, Mark, change this as per addenda. Uh, check with Jim. And I don't need to put a date or time on it because that's part of my audit. So let's go ahead and send that result to the estimate. And let's go back over here and let's see what's happened over an estimate. So we'll close the takeoff down. We'll shut this down. We'll reopen our estimate here. And what you'll see here, the first thing you see is under Judd Yule, this is the thing that changed. And if I right click on this, I can see the audit trail. I can see my audit trails changed. If I want to see a closer look at my audit trail, I can see that here's the first pass. There's the second pass that has been deducted from that. And here's the replacement pass. If I look closer here, I can see that the area went from 298 to 834. Gravel went from 3 to 4. Sand went from 8 to 4. Concrete went from 12 to 10. And my concrete strength went to 3,500 PSI. By the way, there's that note that we did. I didn't have to put a date on it because it gives me the date and time here. So I close that. Here's my revised cost as a result of that and my unit cost per cubic yard. And that's all been revised. And you can see how it's dynamically linked now with the estimate. So if I go back here and close this, that's actually what we wanted to demonstrate is the integration between 2D takeoff and our estimate and the dynamic link between the two where the objects are now linked to every line item and back. This is the next generation of estimating. Thank you for taking time and watching this. Thank you very much.